The Texas Panhandle wildfires last year were the largest to ever burn in the Lone Star State. More than a million acres were torched. The flames even stretching into Oklahoma. It has been one year since firefighters from Houston helped to put out the last of those flames. Tonight, KPRC 2's Gage Golding revisits the area to give us their biggest lessons learned. There's still times out here that the wind will be blowing just right and I'll smell smell of the grass fire. We get a call later that evening from my brother saying, yeah, y'all, your house is gone. And after that, it's kind of a blur. There were unusually warm temperatures, incredibly low humidity, and high winds, everything needed for a wildfire to spark and grow out of control. I'm mad about it. I'm mad for the other families that, you know, going through the same thing as we did. The cause is in the front yard of Jennifer Walker's house that burned to the ground and just feet away from the new home she's building on the other side of town. Electric poles. Unmaintained power poles are the cause of several of those wildfires, which merged into the massive Smokehouse Creek fire. There needs to be accountability. Their, their jobs need to be done. Someone is responsible and should have never happened. Our infrastructure was involved as an ignition of the Smokehouse Creek fire. Meet Adrian Rodriguez. He's the president of Excel Energy, the power provider here in the Texas Panhandle. One of his pools was inspected just a month before winds knocked it to the ground. Crews marking it as a priority one replacement but it was never replaced. Charles Clark still smells that burning grass when the winds shift. Why does it take so long sometimes to get repairs done whenever they know that there's faulty poles? Do you think if that pole was replaced, we probably wouldn't be here having this conversation? You no, know, I think one of the things that we think about is that um, do we wish those types of things would have never happened? Absolutely. We've changed and upgraded pole inspection programs, and of course we work with the state with system resiliency plans so that we can harden our system. Sound familiar? It's similar to a plan that Centerpoint Energy rolled out after the double whammy from the derecho last May and Hurricane Barrel in July. Both storms leaving millions of Houstonians without power. And it turns out the work Centerpoint is doing now, like trimming trees and replacing power poles, protects us from wildfires. Do you think that's a, uh, a step in the right direction? In some cases, some of the hardening measures that you do for one type of weather event will help you for multiple weather events. And again, that's good news for us here in Houston. But as we all know too well, this work is typically a reaction to some sort of devastation. After a year's worth of rain, you can still get that black stuff on your finger, that ash on your finger. It's a heck of a reminder. It's a reminder of their loss, but also a reminder of the opportunity on the other side of the door. This is gonna be our new house. In Fritch, Texas, Gage Golding, KPRC2 News.